we have five case studies this morning. We've seen two presentations. We have three more in between now and lunchtime. Um, what gets me excited, and hopefully for a lot of you in the room, is all contexts are different. The next presenter is uh, Brian Kirstead with Bayshore Home Health Care. Um, one of the interesting things, I actually have some experience with the sector, but home care is a very unique sector in our province here in New Brunswick. It's a growing sector with a lot of issues related to learning. And I know that uh, one thing that came to me to share with you before Brian gets up is that in that particular sector, based on workplace health and safety regulations, and based on things that happen in the workplace, home care pays the same rates as construction for workplace health and safety. And when you're trying to resonate with employers, who pays for workplace health and safety? Who pays the premium? It's the employer. And so a lot of what Warren was talking about, trying to resonate with employers, is really happening in the home care sector. There are major issues related to learning. There's major issues related to changing in the sector. So we're really excited that Brian agreed to come today and to present on behalf of Bayshore Home Healthcare. In reality, a lot of Brian's presentation represents the industry, the home care industry in New Brunswick, which by the way is one of the largest growing industries based on our growing and aging population. There will be more and more need for home care in this province. So. Right here, sir. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Can we hear? What a great looking crowd. As, as the uh, previous speaker mentioned, uh, Rick said the other two few people, not a problem, no big deal. So, there's 105 people here, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice touch. Anyway, as uh, Rick mentioned, I do represent uh, Bayshore Home Health. We have offices, uh, three offices here in the province probably employing about 500 people uh, nationally. It's a national company. We have about 10,000 employees across Canada providing uh, care in these homes and, uh, and institutions uh, across Canada. We're very proud of the services we offer. Uh, in New Brunswick, and particularly uh, across our industry here in New Brunswick, uh, it's important to note that 98% of our workforce is female, uh, and of that uh, group, the average age is about 52, 54 in that area now. So it's an aging workforce trying to provide care to an aging population, which has a, a number of challenges in itself. However, having said that, we uh, do manage to recruit and we <coughs> bring in new people to the industry. And uh, once we uh, find recruits, uh, one of the first things, of course, that we look at is training. How do we train these people? How do we get them uh, up to uh, a level of competency that uh, that we're comfortable with to provide care to our, our clientele? Uh, the essential skill that they all bring to the table is that they're caring people. It does not always equate uh, that they have all of the skills, whether they're core competencies or essential skills or the clinical skills that are required. So it's a huge challenge for the industry to provide uh, this, again, this thing called essential training here across the board for all of our staff. We were lucky enough to, uh, to have worked with Rick in the past and uh, some other initiatives and in conversation with them we sort of became aware of Wes and the, uh, the skills program that they offer. We're very, uh, we're very pleased to uh, get involved with that. Uh, there's about six, I believe now, uh, of, what, of the 52 agencies in the province, there's now six, I believe, that are currently involved in Wes training and, and we believe that uh, at the end of the day that's going to be huge piece of the training uh, puzzle that uh, the industry requires. The thing that, uh, that, that prompted us, uh, in Bayshore and St. John anyway, to, to think, uh, uh, let's have a look at some uh, essential skills. So we were in the process of, of rocking the world of our employees for, about, uh, for the last 
40 years uh, on a weekly basis, people would complete a time slip, a paper time slip, bring it to the office, they were was processed from there, the billing was processed from there, documentation was turned in, and so on and so forth. But we were going to change that up to uh, electronic format, where it's a call, it's a call me system where employees uh, pick up the phone, call when they arrive, Call the duty. It's electronically managed from that point on. Uh, that worked great in order. That's a wonderful idea. It uh, provided uh, essential, you know, provided basic uh, efficiencies in terms of uh, uh, paper flow and just managing hours and time and bills and so on. That was, that, uh, once we had a chance to think about that a little bit, we went, oh my. People are going to need computer skills. People are going to need skills that they may or may not have. We don't know. We really did not know. At that point, we had to guess, we had speculation. We thought, okay, this isn't going to work until we uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to look at it real close. The second piece of that was our uh, bringing in that system that gave us uh, a safety. I guess for all of our employees where before, once we're scheduled, someone goes into your home and they go home and leave home, someone else's home. We had no idea if that was happening, if someone had fallen, if someone had uh, got into a parking lot and was in trouble, who knew? Uh, so with the colony system that we're utilizing currently, we can identify within 10 minutes schedule to where someone is if they report and the same when they leave and if they don't we have a protocol whereby we can find them and uh, that's the amazing process in itself a, a giant leap forward to be safety for employees uh, but also uh, the, the system wants our employees to instead of coming to the coordinators on a daily basis or weekly basis getting the schedules, looking at changes, and, uh, where we're going today, is they can get their own schedules printed from the, whatever computer there. They have an opportunity, yeah, whether it's in their home, whether it's in our office, or in a library, in a neighbor's home, whatever. Uh, that brought up another number of issues in terms of privacy and access. So, did look at all those uh, those pieces, and uh, thanks to the, the great people at West, and St. John and Freddie, uh, we were able to address a lot of those issues, and, uh, and that's a very happy and successful graduates. Anyway, both of the processes that I just outlined required, again, basic computer skills. Uh, we thought that about 50% of our employees did not possess Required skills to take advantage of that new system. And we thought the training was, of course, an essential piece to alleviate any anxiety that the staff, in fact, were feeling because, again, it was a rocky world at that moment for them to take away the time so they could say, okay, you're electronic now. So, again, computers were coming to the forefront of our own. that uh, basic computer skills acquisition and uh, the safety and privacy in uh, using computers. Uh, we looked at their project team, put together a great team, which included uh, Beth, Mary Lou, Melissa, and Kim, our instructor. We're very happy with uh, all of our involvement with that group and uh, had two successful uh, West training projects with them now and are looking forward to having the third and fourth. The retired group, uh, what we did was uh, actually put together a questionnaire and uh, we gave, it, gave that to each of our employees and we asked them questions were really comfortable, basically comfortable with using the computer to access their schedules. And they'd be interested in attending the additional computer training and to uh, uh, navigating websites and 
we had 16 of our uh, workforce indicate that they were not comfortable uh, using the new system and that in fact they needed or wanted uh, some training. The assessments were completed on uh, an individual basis uh, and that was uh, for the first uh, event it was particularly to uh, computer use and uh, looking at their their perception of skills in prior learning in the uh, computers. And again, we, we did a post-training assessment, which we were extremely happy with, and the results were, they were uh, phenomenal. Uh, training took place in a computer lab for uh, computer technology in North End, St. John. Uh, we held two classes a week, two hours each for five weeks. And the challenge for, I guess, our men people Employees, I guess uh, it's, it's a lot of proud moment, but uh, I think all of our employees in the healthcare industry are basically what we consider to be working poor. They work an average of uh, 28 to 33 hours weekly on a wage that uh, well, it's, it's an embarrassing wage. So, um, unfortunately, it's uh, managed by
satisfaction with the training, and we had 100% attendance. At the end of the first phase, and I'd like, like to read these comments and, and just think of the level of thinking, the level of communication, the, uh, the literacy level that the people were at. Well, from that, and you're going to see a difference. Some people had fun. They learned some new stuff. They're happy with the outcome. They want to do it again. Very basic comments. So, uh, again, we, we when we look at the uh, phase two, we uh, wanted to look at some of the different kinds of communication skills that our, our people had some of our documentation ready to go on. So, but also the comments that were made were that they would like to have a smaller group to work with and extend the time. They wanted to commit more time <coughs> to learning. Which is, which is a huge, huge thought. to go with phase two based on the overwhelming success in our minds of the first initiative uh, we decided to move uh, well quickly in July and August last year and we looked at uh, documentation the specific documentation that they would use on a day-to-day -day basis in the work we made it very real we looked at oral communication problem solving writing uh, dealing with clients, uh, some irritable uh, or irate clients that uh, they deal with on, a, on a, uh, any given day, and their decision-making processes. Again, basically the same uh, group uh, of uh, folks who put this together. And we looked again at the perceived needs, for a particular uh, insight into writing. Uh, many struggle in the fact to write effectively with uh, what we call an incident report. And our office staff or coordinators uh, directly had to assist employees with completing documents accurately uh, in, in using the terminology that was appropriate in the objective versus subjective and uh, being concise. Uh, specific Again, uh, items of chronological order of events will happen at home in the given day. Uh, objective writing again versus subjective, concise to say using point form. And Kim, Kim and I are inspectors here in the room, I just wanted to uh, send a kudo to Kim, uh, an amazing instructor at our love fest at the end of the, the, end of the training day with uh, all of our staff. We're just so impressed with her ability, and she does have great skills in terms of training. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit in on uh, uh, for some time in a couple of the courses, and she is uh, very good at what she does. We got the document usage, uh, how to properly complete an unregulated care provider <coughs> parking sheet, which again, uh, go back to the uh, drywall. Our people are not certified per se, it's unregulated. Yeah. <laughs> 
I would say that uh, because uh, uh, nurses and social workers are the ones very intimidating to somebody with uh, all these they're very caring people. And we all love them dearly. Uh, it can be somewhat intimidating uh, to talk to an unregulated really care provider in front of a client and ask them to do something. So I think it's, it's very to say no. Um, and again, to ensure others can actually understand what's being said and how to become, as well, an effective listener. The thinking process, how to continue following proper procedures when the client is agitated and putting a lot of pressure and the family's putting a lot of pressure on you to do something that uh, is not part of the behavior so the practice. Keeping work safe, safety concerns in mind, services. Uh, Rick mentioned we do have, in fact, uh, one of the highest rates of uh, workers' compensation in New Brunswick, which is scary. And, uh, we've got a number of other initiatives to, to as an industry, uh, try to bring that rate down and, and make our workplace not only uh, learning friendly, but also uh, safety. I wanted to look at uh, client confidentiality again, recognize uh, when one may be at risk of breaching this confidentiality. Uh, looking at professional contact, contact in a client's home, for example, on cell phones, uh, using professional language and uh, not sharing negative personal information because there is a, a very strong relationship that's developed between our caregivers they're back providing care for, uh, and it can get very much to all people. So we uh, solicited our participants through basic advertising through our newsletters, uh, announcing uh, a Midwest initiative at our quarterly general staff meetings where we bring everybody, uh, try to bring everybody together, and we got a, a great response from that. 21 actually responded. And sign up for phase two. We also do a lot of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, conversation, discussion with our field staff, and we visit them, supervise them in their, in their clients' homes, and that's always uh, part of our supervisors at that point in time. Uh, focus was to effect, bring up the topic of West and the additional training and some skills that, that uh, uh -oh. <laughs> so uh, 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 you can read that one. <laughs> Again, it took place in our own boardroom in the over a 12-week period, so we, did, we were able to reduce the size of the group in extended period of time. Uh, we wanted to, to increase the skills that perform the job duties that required from writing reports, documentation, communication, and thinking, to increase self confidence in their ability to perform the above mentioned duties, and to ensure that employees have a full, complete understanding of how their actions can impact client confidentiality and the type of work for the purpose. The objectives obtained, yes, we did get a 35% improvement in the oral communication skills of the participants. Also a 35% increase in the improvement post test of our writing and document use of the those participants. And that, I understand, is the highest rate of uh, increase in uh, improvement that uh, West has experienced at this point in the province. So we're very proud of that number. They made statements indicating that they are using their assertive skills, not only at work, but outside the classroom, which would be scary, but not as scary, I'm not sure. <laughs> Our previously quiet learners shared their experiences and gave feedback. A proud, proud moment of graduation uh, that I attended. Every one of the participants before were relatively shy people. Uh, so we'll sit at the table and not say much. 
every one of them stood up spontaneously and gave uh, a testimony as to uh, how they enjoyed the training, what they actually got from the training, which was in terms of communication skills, it was huge. It was huge. And so we were very, very proud of that. Uh, comments from the first comment by the screen I showed you, we were talking about it was fun, they were having a good thing, let's do it again. This time, there was, to me, there was much deeper thought put into their comments in terms of now we can get to a point how I can now get to the point in, the, in what they were writing about the message. They were much more talkative than they were before the learning process. Decision making skills were much they are actually thinking about thinking. It's just a wonderful thing, uh, a place to be at. Uh, they obviously enjoy getting to know their co-workers, uh, enjoy the learning atmosphere, learn to be more assertive, which one particular person was very happy about. Uh, they can write more effectively, and I can attest to that because our coordinators with whom they do communicate with almost uh, some daily on week and others on a weekly basis are reporting that communication skills have increased exponentially. Uh, the, the conversations are more to the point. They're chronologi chronologically correct. Uh, and uh, dominant usage, again, is, is uh, much, much, much better. The survey that was uh, conducted post Thank you very much. 